Kia ora everybody, welcome back to another Draw with Richard. Uh, I'll admit, I was having a bit of a stumped day as to what to draw, so I thought what I would do is do a little drawing exercise. So it's uh, called the Squiggle Game, and you can see here all I'm doing is drawing a few squiggly lines on the paper, and now I'm going to try and make something out of those. So this is a good game to play if you want to practice drawing, if you're trying to get a bit of you know, practice in but you don't know where to start or what to draw. And it's a good way to just kind of challenge yourself a little bit, get your imagination going, and more importantly, get the pencil moving. Because uh, artist block is a real thing, and so doing something just to get yourself moving is often the best way to start if you can't think of anything else. Uh, you can also turn into a game with your mates or your, your family. So essentially, uh, you get the other person to draw you a squiggly line, and then you have maybe oh, 30 odd seconds to try and make something of it. And if they can guess what you're trying to make before the time runs out, or before you finish drawing, they win, and you swap and start again. Or you can do what I did, I'm not frozen here, I'm just thinking really hard, uh, and try to come up with something just to get yourself drawing. So eventually I saw a semi kind of cartoonish face in there with one eye, so I began to draw a big kind of dumpy muppety cyclops. So that long loop became his nose, that uh, jutting out part became an undershot jaw, and I just finished the shape of his face, very shallow head, little tuft of hair at the top there, a bit of carrot, and yeah, just added an ear. So again, I'm not drawing masterpieces here, I'm just trying to get my imagination going. So I tidied it up a little bit and added a few extra features just to kind of, you know, so it looked a bit more like something. And gave him a bit of an expression with a um, angry eyebrow. And some nose here, I don't know why, it felt, felt right at the time. So yeah, there we go. So from that squiggly line, that came a, uh, a cyclops, somewhat grumpy. Possibly because he has no body and I'm out of paper, so moving on. Now the second one, a lot of the time you'll see kind of serpentine shapes, so that could be dragons or the like. So I thought it was kind of boring, so I skipped to the next. So here I've gone and drawn three shapes, and this time I tried to make it kind of differently. So you have a kind of a long squiggle, something a bit more circular, and then these jagged ones. And it took a little while to think of something to draw with these. But again, it's just about working that brain getting the gears going. Now maybe because I'd just drawn a face I decided to draw another one. So just it looked like an interesting profile, a very cartoony kind of caricature style. So that top part became the nose, so I just added a nostril here. Meaning a nostril, not a nostril here. And then uh, yeah just completed the nose shape, added some teeth. So it became the upper and lower lips. and added an eye. And eventually kind of shaped the eye so it looked a bit more feminine, you know, uh, just kind of a bit more heavy lidded with uh, eyelashes and the like. Kind of stereotypically. And then uh, added some more defined lips as well. Yeah, so a little bit different from a Cyclops, but still, you know, just another face there. And I wasn't unhappy with that, it's, it's something. So while I was thinking about what next to do, I defined it a little bit more. And again, these are not good drawings, these are just drawings. I think if you're, if you're practicing, if you're wanting to, to learn to draw, especially if you're wanting to become an illustrator or the like for your, your career, drawing something is better than drawing nothing. Because you know, there are going to be days where you, know, you have things to do and just hit a wall for some reason. So just getting something to get get the wheels turning in your mind is, is always a good idea. Um, other good practices to do are some people draw hands every day, which is highly recommended because if you're going to be an illustrator or an animator, hands are very expressive. So having a good knowledge or handle, beg your pardon, about uh, how to draw hands is great. So just making sure you practice them in different poses and the like is another good exercise as well because it's you know forcing yourself to draw something difficult. But uh, it's, you know, it's all good practice. You know, I'm lucky to know a lot of very good artists, and um, all of them say that if you if you want to get better, if you want to get to a point where you can make a living out of it, practice, practice, practice. So this turned into an electric eel. It's that squiggly shape, and I kind of did the other side to make a bigger body for him. And that circular part of the top became his face, and I just added a couple of little lightning bolts of electricity around to sell the idea that he's an electric eel. Now, my workspace is shared with my wife, who does a lot of sewing. 
So I couldn't really think of anything for the last shape, so it eventually just becomes a sewing needle. Again, not something I'd normally draw, so yeah, it's good. It's just trying to find something in that shape is the whole point. Obviously, I thought about it a lot. And eventually came to. So, I'll admit I thought the video was frozen there for a second. So yeah, just kind of filling out the shape of the needle, adding the eye of the needle, and uh, then just defining the thread a little bit more. Now this is an exercise, but if you draw something you really can't come up with, it's not not a bad idea just to start again, you know. You, know, you, you want to learn to draw something you don't normally draw, sure, but don't punish yourself. So for this next one, I, um, I drew some very abstract squiggles, and I... Um, I couldn't come up with anything, <laughs> but what I did come up with wasn't good, so I just um, moved on. But I'll include it in the video, just to show you, just because, you know, you are going to... I think with this one too, what I did is I shut my eyes, which is extra challenging, because, you know, you're basically opening your eyes and, and seeing whatever mess you've made of your paper. So I tried to get um, very distinct shapes again, more jagged and more curly and the like. And, uh, yeah, I was not happy with myself when I opened my eyes, so I... Uh, <laughs> I tried to come up with something with the first one. I thought it might vaguely look like um, a lamp with a genie. So I started adding the handle of the lamp and the top and then the, um, I guess we'll call it the spout. But it just wasn't working for me. So I, I kept at it for a little while. But, um, you know, I mean, it is it is just an exercise. So, you know, if you, if you can't think of anything, just try again. What I did realize is I was doing lots of little squiggles, so I thought for the next one I'd try to kind of fill up the paper because I wanted to draw a genie, and I'd run out of paper, and I didn't want to draw a little tiny genie, so I gave it a go, but um, yeah, this one didn't work, and that's okay. But <laughs> I kept at it. <laughs> yeah, so I think at this point I thought, yeah, you know, and just start it again. So again, this one I did go blind, so I, um, I closed my eyes, but I tried to make sure I was filling out more of the paper. So when I opened my eyes, it was a bit of a, yeah, okay. Uh, again, I tried to include a few more kind of jagged lines and curly lines, but I decided to do something um, that doesn't normally have curly lines. So that big bulgy shape, I thought, you know what, that could be the body of an octopus. And those uh, lines on the sides could be the start of his first two tentacles. So that's where I went with it. Obviously, if you set yourself a time limit for a game, it's going to get more frantic and the drawings are going to get much worse. You know, that's If you play those kind of drawing games, it is a bit trickier when you want to take a bit of pride in what you're drawing and make sure it looks good. But, um, you know, speed is key sometimes. So if you're going to turn into a little competition with a friend, you know, you just learn to draw quickly and um, get the idea down, idea down fast. And that's another great idea to, to learn. They call those a lot of time um, like thumbnail sketches. That's basically just a really rough little drawing to get an idea down on paper. Um, you, know, you get a lot of ideas down quickly, and then you can look at the best or worst of those ideas or combine them. Um, so this lends itself a little bit to that too. So yeah, normally an octopus wouldn't have a big kink in his tentacle, but um, maybe he got a shut in the door, I don't know. Yeah. The other thing too, if you're going to draw an octopus, is um, Keep a track of how many tentacles you've got down, because too much or too little, somebody's going to count them, you know. So maybe maybe that someone should be you first. So when I got the correct number of them, just kind of tried to make it look interesting, um, kind of overlap. The squiggles meant that, you know, they were always going to look weird, so I didn't trust me too much that they weren't um, even or, you know, equal length. I just wanted to make the paper look interesting, basically. The other thing, too, I'm doing here is drawing upside down. And that's another good challenge, um, especially if you want to draw from a picture. If you turn it upside down, it means you're going to focus on shapes rather than um, specific parts, I guess. So if you're trying to draw a character or a person and you draw them upside down, you're going to be looking for the shapes and the relationship of the shapes rather than kind of going, OK, I've got a nose here, I've got two eyes here. So it, it actually can make things more accurate because you have to think more about how things work. But there we are. Turned them over and I actually quite liked him. I thought he was cute. 
So the next thing I did was, well, I will take this opportunity to practice my colouring. So I took that octopus and, you know, as in previous videos, outlined them, coloured them. I used my fancy pants markers, but also a pencil to kind of add some extra depth and shading. And honestly, uh, I like it. It worked out well, so from a squiggle to that. So it turned out to be a very good exercise. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and you might try and give it a go yourselves. But uh, yeah, otherwise, um, you know, kakita no. I hope you guys have a good time, and we'll see you a bit later on. Thanks again. Bye.